I just spoke with Merck's Mike Nally, a senior vice president uh, and the chief marketing officer of human health over there about this J&J &J vaccine partnership and about how it came together. Um, he told me in terms of timing, they expect that they can, um, <clears throat> within a couple months, bring on the fill and finish part of this, uh, really getting the vaccine into vials. Um, and they're also going to be manufacturing the vaccine itself. That, they said, you know, would take probably into the second half to really start bringing that on board. Uh, I was trying to get a sense of how much this will increase J&J's output. Now, um, I have heard from Johnson & Johnson that this will enable them to surpass a billion doses in 2021. Uh, we don't know exactly the timing of all of that, um, and Merck not saying exactly how much capacity is coming on board, but uh, they did say that the vaccine process is extraordinarily productive in terms of making this vaccine. Um, they also noted that there's not going to be any interruption to the other vaccines they make as a result of this. They had been building up capacity for their own COVID-19 vaccines, and they didn't pan out. And so they are using uh, that capacity to make this. They also say they're open to more manufacturing partnerships for other COVID drugs and vaccines, if they make sense. And they also announced separately some funding from BARDA in order to help them uh, bring that up. Um, you know, finally, we also talked about the significance of this. Uh, a lot of folks comparing it, including President Biden, to World War II and the business effort there. Um, and Mike Nally telling me he sees this uh, like the efforts around penicillin, industry coming together to ramp that up uh, and help the country. Um, now this is a new, a new version of that uh, with this pandemic. Mel? Yes, very good news. Meg Terrell, thanks for bringing that to us. And we just heard prior to the show from Kayla Tausche that President Biden was very optimistic in terms of his projections as to when most American adults will get the vaccine. He moved that timeline up to by the end of May. Um, Guy, that has significant implications for the reopening of this economy. We were just talking about Lyft and Uber. Uh, I mean, it, it could be that things open up much quicker and we see that snapback much sooner. Something that Tim's been talking about, and, mm -hmm. and hopefully that happens. As I mentioned, as a human being, you know, I look forward to that. What I will say, though, is in terms of the market, what's great for the economy might wind up being really bad for the market. And just to drill down quickly on some of these big cap pharma names, if you look, Eli Lilly, um, Merck to a certain extent, Bristol Myers, all since the middle to late January have really traded poorly. Uh, it makes you start to scratch your head. That concerns me a little bit because Big Cap Pharma was a space that I really like coming into this year. It's something to watch, the underperformance of Big Cap Pharma, since all of them pretty much made uh, significant highs in mid to late January. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.